the savings account with interest rate uh, quarterly. Yeah, it's compounded it quarterly. I didn't know how to do that. Seven one number. Uh, number forty in set B. It was uh, seven point four seven. Seven four. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. I wrote. I said that. Uh, okay. So. All right, guys. So, so we have this dude named Jim. <laughs> So this is 41 in 74 Part B. So there's a uh, 40. 40. 40. Yeah. Okay. Let's see about. Yeah. Uh, Eric. Okay, not Jim. Yeah, it's the interest. So Eric puts thirty-two thousand dollars that he just found laying around in a savings account to save for his kids' college education. I love it. So the bank pays eight percent. Uh, what's it say? Tax. Deferred interest per year. So 8% interest per year. Compounded quarterly. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot that was in here. All right. How much will this account be worth at the end of 18 years? So, so. Um, I kind of got to build up to this thing. They give you the formula, but I want to build up to it. Let me make sure they actually give you. Yeah, they do. Where are you? I see you using it. I see you telling me what it is. Blah, blah, blah. give you the, the formula they give you an idea um, so help me out eight percent interest per year now this part is weird compounded quarterly right, this is very technical <coughs> jargon okay not really people are paying attention to what up and go <laughs> um, so compounded quarterly does anyone have any idea what that what that means right <laughs> Huh? Every three months? Every three months, what do they do? I want to say like 25%. Cause it's okay, well, quarterly. quarterly means 25% of the year. So every three months, right? So one fourth of the year is three months. Yeah. So every three months, compound means actually putting the money in. So they oh. give you, uh, so it's 8% per year. So what do you think it is per quarter? Oh, two, two. Two percent per quarter. All right, let me stop. Is that okay? That's all right. So far. Mm -hmm. So every quarter of the year, they are going to add two percent of the money in there on top of this. All right. So, so for example, if I get if I get one quarter. How would you figure out how much money is in there? So after one quarter, 
2002. So guys, after one quarter, they're going to add two percent of the money in the account to the account. Correct. Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out how much money they're going to add to the account? No. Two percent. They're going to add two percent. Two percent of what? Of the thirty-two thousand, right? What does of mean? Multiply. Times. So they're going to do two percent of thirty-two thousand. Say with me. I know. Trust me. The last thing I ever want to do in my life is teach business. This is very low-level business. This is very low-level shit. Like these are things we got to get used to. We have loans and stuff. Uh, so if I let one quarter go by, I'm going to take two percent of thirty-two thousand and add it to thirty-two thousand. Right? I'm going to put that in the bank on top of the thirty-two thousand. And what would that? This would be 0.02 times 32,000 plus 32,000, right? You guys with me? Yeah. Is that all right? Is that 2% of 32,000? And they're going to add that to the 32,000 in the bank. I want the bank amount to be going up, or else what the hell's this bank all about? Can you stop from there? Are you guys cool just with that? <laughs> if it's. Yeah. 8% a year, that means it's 2% every quarter. So if I let one quarter go by, if I let three <coughs> months go by, how much money will be in my account then? Well, what is that? Uh, yeah, 2% of that is 640 plus 30,000 is 32, 640. Stay with me now, this is gonna, this is gonna look gross and then I'll give you a shortcut, right? Quick question, so yes. does that mean we're gonna calculate each year, eight percent on top of that. No, 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 no. Or, okay, if I do four so. quarters, it'll be two percent each. Wouldn't that make it eight percent per year? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'm, I'm so, what I mean is, are we going to calculate from the original amount or from the amount that has been added? Okay, watch, watch, watch. Second quarter. If I let another three months go by. My God, what word is that, Jeff? <laughs> no, no, no. Stay with me. I know. I know. This is even more boring than I normally am. So just stay with me. So I'll let one more quarter go by. I'm going to do the same work. It's just how much money am I operating with now? This is basically what you were just asking. Okay. How much money am I going to do 2% of now? How much money is in the account now? This much. So I'm going to do 2% of this and add it to it. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, something I want you to realize, uh, let me see if I can get you guys with me on this. Here's where the shortcuts, because can you imagine if I let this stay in there 12 years? Mm -hmm. You'd have to do, uh, you'd have to do 48 quarters, yes? You'd have to do what we just did 48 times. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, no. <laughs> I, I would not make them do that. Well, I'm not going to do it. Screw that shit. We're going to notice a pattern, which is a huge part of what we do. Um, right here, this should seem very familiar. Do you guys remember when we did like a discount, 10% discount, so that was 90% left? That's kind of a shortcut. So if I did a 10% markup, that would be 1.1, 1 .1, right? Well, look at this. This is like a 2% markup. Stay with me now. Isn't this gonna be, let me see if you guys are cool with this. Isn't this 100% of 32,000? Yeah. Plus 0.02, 32,000 would be 1.02. All right, now, now stay with me. This is cool. Uh, let's see if you guys are cool with this. I don't know. Is everybody cool with that right there? Two yeah. percent added to a whole thing is one hundred two percent of the thing. That's all I'd say. Yes. Where did you get the point zero two again? Oh, it was eight percent a year quarterly, so that's two percent per quarter. So it's one. You're adding thirty-two, and you're adding two percent. Got it. Yes. So it's a whole one of these plus point zero two of these is one point zero two of these. That's all that says. Yeah, so this would be 1.02 of these. 
Now, real quick, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. This is so cool. Once I get the, the shortcut's gonna be so nice. You just gotta go with me through the mud here for a bit, trudging through this. Wasn't this, wasn't this 1.02 times 32,000? Isn't that where we got that from? So isn't this 1.02 squared times 32,000? What do you think that square means? Where's that square, what's a square mean physically? We allowed how many quarters to go by? Two. Two. So if mom wanted seven quarters, wouldn't it just be 1.02 to the seven. seventh power? I got a shortcut now. Oh. I don't have to do. First quarter, second quarter, 45th quarter. First, you know, mm -hmm. I can just make a power. So what does this problem say? Uh, 18 years. I forget, 18 years? Dude. So how many quarters are in 18 years? Three. Yeah, 18 times four, yes? Oh. There's four every year. So then you're gonna make the power 72. Oh. So you can do it like, bam. You don't have to do it. <laughs> so we're always looking for patterns. And that's what the book examples basically do, but they don't yeah. do the best job of explaining yeah, where things are coming from. Yeah, yeah, so in general, if I have uh, this much money, that's like the principal, in a um, R percent account, right? You with me? So this was 32,000 is P, 8% is R, compounded uh, uh, <laughs> N times per year. Oh shit, and a half. I don't know if you guys are still with me or not. So if I have so much money in a per year interest rate account, compounded so many, so I can do it monthly, right? So if I had a 12% account, number one, tell me if you got a 12% account. <laughs> but number two, if I did it 12 times, if I did it every month, that would be 1% per month, right? I get this, the amount in the account at the end of however much time, it's going to be, uh, let me see if I remember it. <laughs> 1 plus R over N to the, oh, sorry, P times 1 plus R to N. Uh, this is already getting really gross. So this was the 1.02. This was the 32,000. And this is, why is it NT? Well, we had 12 years. Mm -hmm. And how many times per year were we doing it? Four times. Oh. And times T, 48, I'm sorry. Was it 12? 18 years. 18 years, four times 72. Okay. Huh? Now this formula looks really kind of gross. But all, that's all you gotta do, you can do it one step at a time. Okay, is that? Yeah, I got it. And again, that was number uh, 40. 40 in 74B. Okay. Just so you know, that it's coming. So let's do one more example real quick. Um, what if I had a 6% account compounded monthly and I put uh, $57,000 in there for uh, five years. First off, how, what percentage will I do per month? 0.5%? Yeah, 0.5%, right? 6% divided by 12. I'm doing it every month, that's 12 times a year. So I'm doing half a percent per month. So then all you gotta do now, and then how many total times will I compound, how many total times will I actually add money in? I'm doing it monthly, so 12 times a year for five years. 60. 60. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, what is this as a number, by the way? Uh, point, oh, oh, five. Yeah, oh, oh, 005, is that cool? That's what that is as a number. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have the amount in my bank, 
plus this percentage of it. How many times are we going to do that? 60. And then I'm going to multiply that by 57,000. That's what we did just a minute ago. So that's the shortcut. So the, the formula makes it look worse than it is. It isn't that bad. It's the amount, the, the whole thing in the account plus a part of it this many times, and that's what I'm operating with. Put the old calculator and get whatever the hell you get. What do you guys, does anyone do that? Yeah. I'm curious now how much that would make. How much you would have. So you're doing like, uh, just make sure you guys got it. 1.005 times. Uh, 76,000. Ooh, that's a nice amount. 800, 884. Yeah. So 6% is pretty damn good of an account. Every month is really good, right? Normally they're done. Well, I guess they are done for a month, to be honest. But, yeah. Yes? Um, let's say instead of it being um, monthly, let's do every month. Every six Twice a year. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so then what would have changed would have been this would have been. All right. So let's do that problem real quick. This is the last one of these will be. Uh, same everything. So it's a 6% account uh, compounded every six months, right? Yeah. I think that's semi annually. Yeah. Officially is the word. That means every six months. So twice a year, right? That's what's important is twice a year. Uh, so what would it be per, what rate would I do every six months? Three. Three percent. Three percent. So it would be 3% every six months. So then it would be, and it's the same amount of money, $57,000. So then it would be 1.03, a whole amount plus 3%. How many times are we doing it now? I'm sorry, it was still uh, five years. So I'm doing it how many times a year? Twice. Every six months, so twice a year for five years. No, 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 no. I'm doing it every six months, which means I'm doing it twice a year, yes? For five years. So how many times am I adding, having money added into my account? Ten. Ten times. So this is interesting. So this one was what, 76,000 something? Mm -hmm. blah, 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 so let's see what this is. Because everything's the same except the amount of times per year. So I'd expect this to be more or less. Less. Because if I keep putting money and then letting that grow and then money and then let that grow, if I do that less, it's not gonna grow as fast. I don't know how much less it'll be. Uh, it's going to take $200. Less. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about very long time. We're not talking about, believe it or not, we're not talking about very much money, relatively. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know. Some of us is like, it's still that's pretty good amount of money. Okay. Um, Especially in my first job when I was making three twenty six an hour. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. First paycheck, I think, it was thirty-four bucks. I'm like, Ugh, thirty-four. Of course, gas cost about a buck twenty-eight. <laughs> oh, there you yes, I'm finally on the other side of this, where I'm the old guy saying, "I remember when <laughs> lettuce was up and everything." All right. Cool. Thank you. Sure. That one's a weird one. Yeah. All right, guys. Anything else? That's just another place you run into percentages. Some of you guys might run into them with student loans, right? Especially if you're going to go to university or something. When I graduated finally with my last degree, <laughs> several degrees, I had amassed about thirty thousand dollars in student loan debt. And I still remember that when I did my last payment, I was like, <laughs> I felt so good. Yes. Would it be off topic to do a problem on the test? 
<laughs> I will allow it since you went like this. <laughs> um, which one? It's number nine. Oh, um, so the trick yeah. there, the one about the map? <coughs> yeah. So the trick there is make a proportion, right? So half an inch to three and a half miles equals, I don't know how many inches, to 11 miles. Is that, no? So if I make a proportion, half an inch on the map relates to, what was it? Three and a half miles in real life. So 11 miles in real life is, is how many inches of the map? That's, that's the idea, right? So if half an inch is three and a half miles, seven miles would be what? One. Yes, right, double. So this, this proportion, this ratio has to stay constant as I multiply up. So now you just multiply, blah, blah, blah. I know you got fractions, but you can kind of do what I just did. Isn't this fraction the same as? Yeah. One over seven? Yeah. All right, then uh, yeah, that's, I've already done too much. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it too easy. But everybody was freaked out about the fractions, but whenever you have fractions instead of fractions, you can kill them, right? Okay. Yeah, I guess I overthought it. I kind of did a guess and check kind of game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a few people trying to like build up to it. Yeah. But the answer is not a whole number, no. so. Yeah, it's a hard one to guess and check to get to. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else? Homework or test or anything? All right, I just got a lot to spew in your direction. So <laughs> we're just going to, I've kind of allowed us, and this is my fault, I've kind of allowed us to get just a little bit behind. Um, <coughs> not the end of the world. Um, so we're finally, okay, so we, we started getting to chapter eight, like the tiniest bit. So what chapter eight introduces is uh, the idea of the integers, right? So when I teach algebra, I like to give a little story about a caveman and his rocks, when I talk about the different types of numbers. So cavemen, for example, I'm not talking bad about cavemen, I don't know what they were, but I, I would think that they wouldn't have some idea of zero. They have one rock, this guy has one rock, you with me? Got his one rock, he likes his one rock. Fantastic. So he's walking around, good one rock. So this guy's got two rocks. This guy over there up the hill's got seven rocks, whatever. You guys with me? This is really silly, I know, but. Okay. He loses his rock. So he has to come up with the idea of zero. Zero was, I think I've told you, was invented at some point in time. Right? Not just the idea of zero, that had to be thought of, but also a symbol for zero and uses of zero. You guys kind of with me? Mm -hmm. So we talked about the Babylonians are a good example of that. They did invent zero, but it wasn't too long before after that that their whole civilization collapsed. Um, so walking along, loses his rock, zero rocks. He borrows a rock. What idea does he have to come up with now? When you borrow something, you are in debt. So you have to come up with the idea of negative, yes? So now he's got a negative idea, right? So he's got, borrowed this rock, he's tripping along, he's fantastic, he can use it to kill things, he can use it to just look at or whatever. And then of course he trips and his rock breaks. And he loses part of it, so now he's got like a fractional part of a rock. So he's gonna come up with the idea of rational numbers, right? Those are the ratios, the fractions. And then of course, you got the weird little dude sitting over there talking about square root of seven, right? That's irrational numbers. Anyway, anyway, you guys kind of get the idea. So you got this building out. You start from um, uh, counting numbers, one, two, three. Whole numbers add zero. Integers adds negatives. Rationals add fractions, so forth. Um, so now we're finally introducing negative numbers. We're going to get into uh, problems like, well, first off, if I introduce negative numbers, the most immediate way to do that visually would be through what thing that we've used already several times? Yeah, number line. 
So we've done this, and we have zero sitting there, and so far we've only talked about these. But it's kind of natural to say then what's back here? Well, if I follow the pattern, goes down one, goes down one, goes down one. And for a decent chunk of history, people didn't trust negative numbers. I think I told you, oh yeah, I want to show you that, that final video. Thing. Um, and they, they didn't trust negative numbers. So they actually rewrote equations so no negative showed up. Because they felt like it was, no, I can't write that because it doesn't make any sense. But we know better. So even just the idea of like negative two by itself. What does that actually mean, right? Can somebody come up with a way to just to tell me what does that even mean? Two less than zero. I like it. Okay, so there's like a two steps up is positive two, two steps down is negative two. So maybe one way to talk about it is the negatives just tell me what direction I went from zero, right? And that's not good enough for calculations later, but that's that's an interesting way to explain. You know, negative just tells me I went that way. Right? Are you guys with me so far? Yeah. Anybody have another way that you could describe what negative two would represent? Like two, I understand. Two apples. Okay, great. Uh, like, how much is needed to make zero? Like, the opposite of what is needed to make zero? Okay, so you're thinking about what we call additive inverse, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Like, it's reciprocal, so to speak. Yeah, so the yeah, same idea as multiplication as reciprocals, addition has additive inverses, right? Okay, so like, let's see, I still, still, that's too much of a uh, math idea kind of thing. I want a physical like understanding. Owing money. Okay, good. So owing money, owe someone two bucks. <laughs> right, good, right. What else could it be? Possibly represent temperature. Temperature, I love it. Temperature in Alaska or something. So that'd be like negative two degrees Fahrenheit. That's weird. Americans. You make Celsius. Maybe. Fahrenheit. You can make it Celsius and yeah, they still work. Alright, and and uh, one other thing would be like, uh, well, sort of like the distance thing, but. Uh, I'll bring that up later because it's just like the distance thing. Um, so now let's kind of bring this away from physical interpretations. So it does have physical interpretations, so it's not like some imaginary thing. Hell, imaginary numbers are not imaginary things, right? It's just a bad name. Um, now that we kind of have an idea of what this means, we can start to investigate how it acts, how it operates in mathematics. Um, so, kind of like what Juan just said, what would this mean? How could I represent that? So, what we said earlier was negative two means going two back. Two means going two forward. So, if, if I literally read this, this tells me to walk two steps back and then two steps forward, I'm going to end back up at zero. zero. So you can go back to this. Like once said, this is the measurement model we've used before. You can use the measurement model to kind of, so when you draw this, negative two would just be an arrow two back, and plus two would then be going up two. So of course I end back up at zero, yes? This is 8.1. 8.1, yeah. I'm really bad about that. Just go into ideas. Um, okay, so that measurement model we've used before, we've used actually very much like this. All right, there's another kind of way to do this, and it's the way that I did really quickly at the end of the last class, where you can use the idea of uh, negative and positive, almost like negative and positive particles, if you want to break it down to like chemistry and physics. But it's not that bad. Um, I'm going to represent. Uh, go ahead. I do have red script. I'm just going to do this. So yeah, here. What am I doing? I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing a probability problem. Um, so if I had, for example, negative two 
I could represent that with two reds. I think I just go ahead and do this, Jeff. Don't be lazy. I could represent that with two red discs. Yeah, really good base. And then two, I could represent with two black discs. And when I add these together, I don't know if I made these. When I add these together, what happens is every pair of these opposite sign things. What are they going to do with each other? Cancel out. So you've got to kind of start with this idea that there are pairs of numbers that cancel each other out. And you can explain that through distance. That's one way you can do it very easily. You can even explain it through like with one of these, right? If it was negative two degrees and then it went up two degrees, what is it now? Well, it's zero. Or if I owe you two dollars and I find two dollars, I can pay you off and now I owe you nothing. You don't break my thumbs. So any pair of these cancel out, so this ends up being just a big empty thing, which is zero. Which of course could explain why the symbol for zero is what it is. Makes sense. Are you guys kind of with me? What's up? Yeah? It just seems so simple. I know, I know, but this, again, I've got these little manipulatives, and unfortunately, I don't have a little black disc, I have little blue discs, but you know, they're gonna represent the same idea, because we're gonna get a little bit trippier very soon, but that's the basic idea of representing positives and negatives. Because, I mean, we're eventually gonna have to figure out how do I do a problem like negative four minus 11? How do I do that with this, right? Okay, we're gonna get there. Okay. Um, Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. So let's, let's, let's actually start moving in that direction. Uh, if I had a problem like, here, you guys do this real quick. Three plus negative two. You do that, uh, let's do it that way first. Do it the, and on your paper, if you don't have red and stuff, you can just put R, R, B, 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 whatever, right? Or you can even put pluses and minuses if you want to. So you could do, uh, that's a little dead dude, sorry. <laughs> a little dead dude. Negative two would just be negatives, right? Just put these in a little. So when I put them all together, I get plus, 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 negative, negative. And of course, a plus and a negative will kill each other. So I'm left with, which represents one, which of course is what three plus negative two is, thank God. I like it. Um, would we be required to do like change the, the value first? I was like plus and minus. Oh, yeah, I well, minus. this means something different than, in fact, let's talk about that right now. Um, is this the same as three minus two? Now, of course, all of us here know Yes, Jeff, because we've all gone through elementary school, right? People who are first learning this, they ain't gonna know that shit. None of this is, none of this is we're born with. We're born with zero of this, right? This is all stuff that symbol three, we created it sometime and when we had a new little human running around, like, hey, little human, this is three. And then they weren't around. So we know this is true. But, so what does this mean? I have in a circle. I have three. And how many of them am I going to take away? 
Let's go, let's go to take two of them on. So this is where people don't like common core math because they say, well, we know this is the same. Why do you look at it? But because physically, they do represent different things. Yeah. This is three plus negative two. You can represent each of those separately. This, three things, and I'm gonna take two of them away. Right, so then you can do this. These two here, if you're looking at me funny, take them away and I'm left with one still, right? Yeah. Okay, I like it. So here it's more like a constant of, here it's more like a constant of adding yes. a negative number. You actually have two separate sets, and again, this is the set model here, right? Yeah. You have two sets, one for this, one for that, and you're gonna put them together. This one, I've got a set of three, I'm gonna take two of them away. And I, I end up with the same answer, which is kind of like, oh, maybe they're the same thing. Right. All right, I like it. All right, now what about measurement model? Let's do the measurement model real quick. What does that mean? Two number line. Number line, I love it. measurement model doesn't really distinguish between these two. Yeah. What do I do first? The three. I go three steps that way. Right? And then it tells me to go, go back to. Go back to. And then I can see exactly where I end up. Right? Again, both of those are really nice because they're very visual. Uh, you, can, you can have things that they can move around, they get to draw stuff, right? They will love that stuff. So do we, bro. Yeah. We still do. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Ice cold. I like it. So, you know, so for example, uh, negative four plus three. I could do that with the set model. I could do that with the measurement model. But can somebody bring me back to physically what would that mean? Negative four plus three. What would be a physical situation that describes? I owe you four. Yeah, you owe me four bucks. But I already have three on me. You have three dollars on you. Give it to me, now you owe me a dollar. So negative one, owe me, negative. So in that case, negative means you owe money. So if you owed me four dollars and you found seven, that would be negative four plus seven, you pay me off and you still have three. positive three because you still have it. Are you guys? So that's kind of nice. Unless you get really too young and they don't know much about money. <laughs> but as you get older, you can tell people, okay, it's sort of like owing money versus having money, right? Owing is negative, having is positive. Um, what's the another? Oh, I see. It's sort of like the same thing as money. Right. What about yeah? temperature? Temperature. So it was negative four yesterday. It went up three degrees today. So now it's negative, negative one degrees today. Right. I always like the one about uh, what did we do? Negative four plus three. I always like the one about uh, negative means dig and positive means yeah. climb. So you dig four feet down and then you climb three feet up. Well, now I'm still down one foot. That's very visually, you can see that in your head. Dig four feet down, climb three feet up. I'm still under the ground, I'm still a foot below surface, right? Yeah. Okay, I like it. I'm sure you guys, have you guys ever heard of, um, oh, what's his name, Louis Escobar, Louis, Louis Escobar, the guy, the stand and deliver teacher, oh. the fill in the hole where the kid was trying to do negative one plus one and the class was chanting, fill in the hole, fill in the hole. So you can even think of this as dig a four foot hole and then put three feet of sand in. It's still a foot hole, right? 
So negative one plus one, you'll be dig up one foot hole and then put one foot of sand in. Zero now, right? To fill in the hole. Okay. All right. I like it. Uh, everything's all there. There it is. Thank you. I don't know who I was thinking about. I always forget his name, which is terrible. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, so. Let's shake off. All, all these things are really cool. I think you guys agree that the money, obviously, people can normally relate to, unless you're too young. The temperature thing, maybe. and But everybody can relate to the digging and filling and stuff. Right? Even I don't care how young you are, you like to dig and stuff. Um, let's come back to pure math for a second. Uh, can somebody tell me uh, what uh, this is? What's the answer? Negative two. Yeah, negative two, right? And how do you know that? Because at the end, you'll still have two negatives. Left Good. You got more negatives than positives, so of course you're going to have some uh, negatives left at the end. I love it. Um, what about? Let me see. What about this? Um, what do you got, Jeff? Now, let's say negative three point oh six plus two. So you would still have minus uh, negative 1.06? So here's a cool little thing. I, I don't know, I, I'm hoping you guys don't have any issues, but I have people, I don't, I don't care what level of math I teach, I actually have people that still have trouble with negative signs. If the two numbers you're looking at have different signs, right, we subtract and put the sign of the bigger one back on. So 11 minus 9 is 2. The bigger one's negative, put the negative. 3.06 minus 2 is 1.06, right? But the bigger one's negative, so we put the negative back on. If the signs are the same, see how they're both negative? Mm -hmm. You add them and then put the sign back on. Right? Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. If I owe 11 bucks, I always wished that two debts would cancel each other out, but they don't, damn it. <laughs> Owe you 11, owe somebody else 7, I owe 18 all together. Ah, oh, shit. Because you're just getting more and more negative, right? Okay. All right. We all know this stuff. This is all about how to explain it to the kids. So you start with the physical, you start with the visual, right? But then at some level, you want to kind of give them something, a rule like if they're the different signs, subtract, bigger sign goes on. So that kind of rule would be quicker to access, right? Right. Sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Yeah. The bottom one, where you said negative divided by the minus seven. Yeah. Wouldn't we put like another negative? Because when I look at that, I realize it's a positive seven. Oh, okay. Um, well, okay. Plus, I'm sort of skipping the idea that this is the same thing as this, right? Yeah. Okay. The neat, the weird thing about subtraction and addition, and the extra weird thing about addition, if I just write the number eight, we know it's positive. So if I do this, I really didn't change anything. In fact, if I did that, you'd be like, what the shit's wrong with you, dude? Right? But if I want to write negative 8, I don't have an option. So here's the weird thing. Subtraction and negative numbers are the same thing. Addition and positive numbers are the same thing. Right? The signs. Now, I can add a negative number, correct? So this is not a positive number. This is adding a negative number. Oh, let's get a little too deep in there. So yeah, this subtraction sign, I could still also look at it as a negative sign. I like it. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, we gotta go. The only new property is one we already talked about. So we have uh, com commutativity, associativity, closure. You guys remember what all those are? If I... No, okay, so let's talk about closure. If I add or sub, if I add or subtract any two integers, will the answer be an integer also? Is there any way to take any two, give me any two numbers, positive or negative, and put them together and get something that's not an integer? No. There's no way in hell, right? If you give me two integers and you add or subtract them, you're not going to get a fraction. Does that make sense? You can only get a fraction if I divide. So integers are closed under addition and subtraction. Because you're gonna get an integer if you combine two integers. Okay, I like it. What about 
Commutivity, commutativity. What did it take to be commutative? Change the order. Order. Yeah. So the simple one would be 8 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 8. Right? Are integers commutative under addition? Is this the same thing? Yes. yes. Of course it is. Right? Are integers commutative under subtraction? Under addition, all good. Under subtraction, I would need negative 11 minus 3. Is that the same thing as? Uh, what am I trying to do? Let's do this. 3 minus 11, is that the same thing as 11 minus 3? No. No. So subtraction is not commutative. Because you don't get the same thing. So commutativity tells you that if you take any single thing and move it with somebody else, you end up with the same answer at the end. And then associativity is when you move what? Parentheses. Parentheses, if you move parentheses. So associativity is parentheses moving around. So if I had, uh, let's do under addition. If I had seven, plus negative two plus negative five. Is that the same thing as seven plus negative two plus negative five? Yes, right? Because what's seven plus negative two? Five. Minus five is? Zero. Zero. What's negative two plus negative five? Plus seven. Plus seven? Zero. Zero. So it's sort of like, I have a feeling nobody does this anymore. I certainly don't. But if you remember back in the day when you might have been uh, balancing your checkbook. I don't know who writes checks in. But uh, you can take all the positives, all the negatives, add them up, and then subtract at the end. Right? That's how you would normally do it. And that's exactly what this is saying. If you're adding a bunch of positives and negatives, you can do them whatever order you want to. Right? But again, subtraction, this doesn't work for. Of course not. Is that okay? So we kind, of, we kind of inherited those things from whole numbers. So the one new thing, the one new thing which we mentioned earlier is the additive inverse. I can't remember, I might have brought this up before because when we did multi what's multiplicative inverse? What's another name for multiplicative inverse? Starts with an R. Reciprocal. Reciprocal. So multiplicative inverse just means what do I multiply by to get back to the multiplicative identity? What do I multiply by to get one? I multiply by the reciprocal. Right. Additive inverse, same idea. What do I add to something to get back to the additive identity? What do I add to something to make it zero? So if I had seven sitting here, what do I add to it to make it zero? Negative seven. Negative seven. I love it. So if I had uh, negative a sitting here, what would I add to it to make it zero? A. A. So all the additive inverse means is change the sign. So that's why it's not good enough to say, if I ask you, what is the opposite of three? You cannot answer the question. Or you can try. What's the opposite of three? Opposite of three. Or give me something. Don't get freaked out that I said you can do it. What's the opposite of three? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Negative three. Negative three. Okay, you're wrong. Because <laughs> I was thinking one third. And so the word opposite isn't specific enough. Additive inverse is the opposite related to addition. Multiplicative inverse is the opposite related to multiplication. Right? So that's why I have a multiplicative inverse, additive inverse. Okay. Here's a strange question. Is this negative? I have no idea. Because what could A be? It could be a negative. It could be anything, right? It could be positive and negative. If A is negative 3, what's negative A? Or 3. 3, right? So negative A, I don't know if it's negative or positive. It just means the opposite of A. 
right? The additive inverse of a. There's a better word. All right, I like it. So the properties are basically inherited when we start talking about negative numbers, uh, negative whole numbers. Um, something interesting, look at this pattern. Uh, what's four minus two? two. Holy shit. Uh, what's four minus one? Three. 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 Amazing. Four minus zero? Four. What, what seems to be, do you see how I keep changing this by one? And what's happening with the answers? They're going up by one. There's no reason that that shouldn't continue. So what is four minus, what's the next number down from zero? Negative one. Negative one. It would have to be five. five, right? So this is a pattern you can actually show people before they even know negative numbers or what they mean but they know subtraction, you could show them this pattern and say somehow four minus negative one is five, right? Yeah. I like it. So, how would I represent four minus negative one in set model? That'd be like, uh, say, Let's start with four, right? Uh, four plus sign. All right. Now, I want to take negative one away. I want you really with me because this is where it gets a little bit trippy, but. This is kind of cool, it's kind of a nice thing. Do I have any negatives in there to take away? But don't I, it's telling me to take one negative one away, but I don't have any in there, do I? Yeah. What can I add to anything? And it'll stay the same, yeah. zero. What is zero? What could? What is another way to say zero? I, I love it, you're all like, zero? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> negative one plus one. That's another way to say zero, uh, yes. So. Look what I could do. I could take this and leave these guys alone. But if I do this, yeah, Jeff. <laughs> then I just change what it is. Isn't that still four? Yeah. I want you guys, yes. But would we be able to distribute the negative sign? Oh yeah, yeah, we would eventually get there. Okay. But we haven't made that connection yet. I, I know we sort of did it. I'm, this is what's weird about teaching this class is we know all the shit, but from the student's perspective, they wouldn't have that connection yet. But this kind of leads in the direction of why that makes sense. Now, now, is everybody cool with what I just did? I really want you to understand, isn't this telling me to take away a negative? And I don't have any negatives. Four doesn't have any negatives. So what I do is I kind of say, okay, it's actually got a plus or negative right there. In fact, everywhere I look, there's a plus and a negative because there's, there's nothing here, there's nothing here. Maybe. I can put as many of those in there as I want to or need to. I want you all to really understand that. Now can I take negative one away? Like it wants me. Can I take a negative one away? Yes. And I can take this and take it out. And what am I left with? Yeah. And of course, that is the answer, right? Yeah. Yeah. But again, that's a, we are building on something they understand. They understand takeaway. This is a really neat idea. It's, it's very trippy, where you, you, you can't take that away because there aren't any of them in there. But we have this idea that this is zero. In fact, so is this. So is this. I don't know. Right? That's zero right there, what I just did. Maybe. Maybe. I'm gonna find out in a minute. Um, so here, here's one we can do directly. Can you guys, this is not like this, not as weird as this one. 
Could you do negative three minus negative two? This one's not gonna be as trippy. It should be very direct. So negative three <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I want to take away what? I want to take away two negatives. And do I have two negatives? No. Do I? Oh yeah, three. Can't I take two of them away? So I don't have to do something weird because I have some of what it wants me to take away, right? Yeah. Right, so I can do this. Take it away. So, of course, what's left? A single negative. Right? And is that the answer? This would be negative 3 plus 2. That would be negative 1. Because I'm still put down in the hole or whatever way you want to go. So, let's do this. I think we're ready for this. Uh, like I said, I don't have um, black discs. Blue. <laughs> I don't know how to do this really quickly. Uh, can you take just a, yeah, a smattering. Let's see how many you got. That should be plenty. Take like five or six of each. Doesn't matter if you get more. Good there? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Sorry, I'm. Oh, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Grab a handful. I'm not going to play poker, sorry. <laughs> You'd think I'd be really good at poker with all my math stuff, but I have a horrible poker face. Oh, no. I'd have to wear giant glasses to cover my whole face. They're making a comeback. The giant glasses? Yeah. All right, let me put this up here. Can you guys, let me give you a problem and I'll try to catch up here. Um, all right, I'll start you off nice. Can you do uh, negative five plus two? Got that written down? Let me cover it down. Alright, so 
years. Negative four now. What did you guys, what did you do from here? There's negative four, right? And what's it asking me to do? That you can almost see. Take negative five away, but I've only got freaking four negatives, right? Yeah. Does anybody have a suggestion on what I can do? I could put five positives and five negatives and then take five negatives away. Do I have to do that? I already have four negatives. Don't I? How many more negatives do I need to do what it wants me to do? One more. So what am I allowed to introduce that doesn't change? Yeah. So if you put positive and a negative, that's the same. Now I can do what it wants me to do. Take away negative five, and of course the answer is I like it. We're gonna do multiplication here in a minute, so get ready. Uh, let me see what else. Yeah, let's try. Okay, let's try one more to do this. Let's try. Uh, yeah, yeah, three minus negative two. when they're first learning this, they will just see this as physical objects. They can see them, right? They can see what's going on. They can get a feel for what's going on physically. As you're teaching them, you're trying to infuse them with the mathematical idea of what this represents, right? But the very first thing you want to do with students this young, when they're first learning an idea, is physical. Move stuff around, right? So on one level, it, it it doesn't matter what this really represents. It represents number of red things and number of blue things. And you can actually see what's happening. What does this, of course, lead to? Uh, what can you kind of teach them if you do a few of these? Okay. Three minus negative two, four minus negative seven. The two negatives. Yeah. Three minus negative two is the same as three plus two. Right? And they've seen physical evidence that, that makes sense. Okay. Um, all right. So let's try this. Guys, think about this. Alright, help me out real quick. Let's do something really, 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 really straightforward. How would I represent 2 times 3? Let's see if you remember. This is not even this section, this is from before. How would you represent 2 times 3? What does that mean? 2 groups of 3. So, what would you put down? And just to be a little three, pedantic, three, three, three. it's all positive, right? Yeah. So it should be blue things you're doing, right? So I, I put one group of three, and then I put another group of three. Oh, you're a weird little dude. <laughs> I didn't mean anything, I'm sorry. There's another one, look at it. All right. So that's two groups of three. All good. So I think some of you guys were getting a little ahead of me. What if I then ask, all right, well, what's two times negative three? What would you do? 
Six red ones. Yeah, you put, well, what would you do? You would, what does that mean? That means two groups of three negatives, right? So two groups of three red ones, right? And of course, when you do that, you'll see it's six red ones, which means negative six. All right, here comes the weird shit. That's pretty straightforward, right? Yep. And this is stuff they've done before. And right now, they're just physical objects. It doesn't matter that, like, the, the ancient people had trouble with, what's negative six? Two apples, I understand. Negative six apples, what, what is that? Right, stay away from those, don't eat those. Okay. Negative apples, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. So what in the hell? Okay, here it goes. I'm gonna let you think about this for a minute. You know where I'm going. Now, we, I know you know the answer to this question, but how would you represent that? This is really trippy, yes? I know you know the answer. answer is, because we know that two negatives cancel each other when you multiply. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when you're combining things, debt doesn't cancel with debt. It's too bad for us. How the hell would you represent that physically? <laughs> what does negative two by itself mean? We talked about several different things it could mean, right? Physically and so forth. What does it mean if I just see, like, a, a, in a problem, I see a minus two in the sequence of things that wants me to do what? Take away, Take away two. So let's think about it like this. That would be two groups of reds. Mm -hmm. It wants me to take two groups of reds away. Do we currently have anything here? No. How, so, so there's nothing here, correct? Mm -hmm. There's zero here. So if you plop two groups of three reds down, you better at the same time. I want this is just like what we had to do earlier when we had to add some reds and add some blues so I can take a couple reds away or something. Yes, you remember that? We had to put shit in there that wasn't in there before, but they were all zero. So right now, before I've done anything, there's nothing. And it wants me to take two groups of reds away. Because that's what negative means. It means take those away. I don't have shit to take away. <laughs> but what can we do? Well, if I slap down <coughs> two groups of three reds, so now I'm able to take them away, but right now I'm kind of like breaking the laws of physics. There was nothing, and now there's shit. So what do I better put at the same time? Antimatter, that's right. What I better put down. All right, so I've just put this stuff down. So right now, this is still a blank page. You guys understand what I mean? This is zero. Yeah. But we can do what this says. It wants to take two groups of three reds away. So let's do that. So what's the answer then? Six blue. The answer that we knew it was supposed to be, yes. We knew it was freaking six. At the beginning, you're like, what are you doing, Jeff? I know it's six. But again, we desperately want a physical, manipulative, visual, something they can touch way to show them that the answer to this is six. And, and then you do several of these, and then you start to do a discussion of well, what's negative times negative seem to be, which leads into three minus negative two is three plus two. Okay. Is that, I don't know, how you guys feel that? How about, let's do this. Um, another one. So please do, um, what do you got, Jeff? Uh, negative three times four. I don't know why I put four in parentheses at this point. He never gets in parentheses for that, so I wanted to do it for him. Make sure you guys are on the right track. Can somebody tell me in English what this wants me to do? Take away, Take away. three groups of four. Three groups of four. You currently have nothing there. Oh, I didn't give you enough stuff, did I? Mm -hmm. Shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me change these numbers. Over. What would actually work with how much? I think negative two times three would work. Yes. Yeah. 
Did we do two groups of three? All right, Mark. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, what's the matter? You need one more? Yeah, this one is. So two groups of three. And the minute I put that down, I am forced to put this down. I don't have any option. And now if you take away two groups of three positives. And of course the answer is Negative, and we knew that from the beginning. We know because we, we understand this shit. We've gone through this shit, but they have. Again, you gotta love that these things that you wouldn't imagine have physical interpretations. They totally do. It's neat. Um, let's see. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Well, all right. Can you imagine that? Division might get really, really, really strange. Yeah. I mean, not re not immediately. Like I could do this negative four divided by two. How do you think you would do that? How many twos are in negative four? How would you do it with the minifluence with the discs? Uh, it's supposed to be like. How many do you have total? You have four reds, yes? Four reds. And you want to do what to them? How many? Put them into two groups. Uh -huh. That's one way to look at it, right? Uh -huh. So how much is in each group? Two, two reds, so negative two. Now, if I put a negative down here, that's where things get exceptionally tricky. So what we want to do before we get to that place is to emphasize from what we see here what would this be? What's the answer to that? What's the quick way to do this? <laughs> oh, thank God. That was canceling out the negative. <laughs> Almost nice that it happened. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, so every pair of negatives kill each other. <laughs> So you go, so if there's an even number of negatives, there won't be any left alive. So the answer will be positive. If there's an odd number of negatives, the answer will come out negative, because there'll be one left over, right? So if I had five negatives, then these two would cancel. <coughs> Careful, Jeff. No, yeah, so these two would cancel, so you'd have one left alive. Right. So how many do I have? One, one, two, three, four, five. Right, so these two kill each other, these two kill each other, and he's still left alive. Now be careful, what's the answer then? Negative? One. One, yeah, thank God. I always get somebody tell me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's, it's negative seven or something. <laughs> one does one is one. Um, real quick thing about, I want you to, let's look at this, this is kind of cool. Um, Kind of new. And this kind of gets at, I'm sure there's still some of you guys that are like, okay, why do I add negatives and stays negative and I multiply negatives and it becomes positive? Okay. Multiplying by negative, and this is funny, this is not just a way to look at it. This is physically what it means, and graphically what it means. Let me say it like that. When I take a number, if I do one times negative one, I am rotating 180 degrees. Bam. So multiplying by a negative means rotating by 180 degrees. So what would negative one times negative one mean? Where would I start? Negative one, and that would rotate. And this tells me to do what? Rotate 180 degrees. So what's the answer? One. So I kind of break that down into a quick little thing I can say in lecture. Think of a negative meaning turn around, right? So if I'm facing somewhere and I go and I say turn around, okay, all right, yeah. turn around again, all right, shit, all right. So <laughs> two negatives, you're facing back the same way you were, so they cancel each other out. This sort of is, it kind of comes from this. Can't like it. Now, <laughs> just because I want to, 
Um, right. What if I turn? What if I turn halfway? Can't we physically turn like a quarter turn, right? Can I physically just let me see which way I'm going? Yeah. Can I just physically turn half? Two way? Yeah. All right. What what's what is what is what what is here? What is here? There's no y-axis. This is just the number line. Here's all the real numbers. Yes, all the real numbers are here. Mm -hmm. So what do you think's up here? Half of them. Imaginary. Yes. Oh. All right. So keep that in mind. I'm going to show you. Don't worry. There's no imaginary numbers in this class. <laughs> Right? I, and I know I'm talking about them right now because it kind of naturally comes off of this. And by the way, let me do this one little thing. What's the square root do to a number? I know this is way ahead of our content, but we know what square roots are. What does the square root do to a number? Cuts it in half. I love it. So if, a half, if I want to do half a turn multiplicatively, that is like a square root. So this is, this would represent the square root of negative one. It's half of a negative one term, it's half of a term. And that is what we call an imagined number, which is just a bad choice of words. Because they do exist. They do exist. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so let's do this. What do I have left to do here? I kind of want to, yeah, okay, I'll show you the, I'll show you the video at the end. Um, let me come back to the board. Yeah. So, just to kind of summarize a little bit of what we just said, um, what would this be? A, B, right? Is that cool? Because the two negatives would kill each other, right? Uh, there's not much else to say about that. That's, that pretty much captures everything in one thing. Um, yeah. Something I, I skipped by earlier was if A plus C equals B plus C then what must be true? I kind of skipped this earlier when we were talking about. If A plus C equals B plus C, how do A and B relate to each other? Yeah, why, why do we know that this means A equals B? Because if you subtract C. Yes, I could just subtract C from both sides, right? Good old basic idea of algebra and solve an equation. What if AC equals BC? Then what? Uh, a equals B of C is not zero. Good, I love it. <laughs> I was gonna say A equals B as long as good. C. So A equals B. If A C equals B C. If I said something times three is equal to something else times three, you're like, <laughs> the only way that could be is if they're the same thing. Yeah. Right? That's all I'm saying. Unless C is zero. If C is zero, what is seven times zero? What's 87 times zero? zero. So does seven equal 87? No. no. Okay. So that's why C can't be zero. A zero always kind of finds a way to screw up. Sorry. Nature finds a way. Um, but, but, but. Okay, so we're sort of like stepping in that direction. Oh, one last thing. If, all right, real quick. If A times B equals eight, can you tell me anything about A or B? Do you know what either one of them are? What could they be? Two. Two and four, right? One and eight. Or? One and eight. One and eight. Or? Negative, negative one and negative eight. eight. Or negative two and negative four. Or one and half and 16. Yeah. Or, holy shit, that's basically infinite possibilities, right? Yeah. But. We don't know shit. 
<laughs> but if A times B is zero, this might sound familiar to those of you who passed algebra. If A times B is zero, we know something. Without a doubt. What do we know? One of them is zero. One of them has to be zero. Then A is zero, or B is zero, or they're both zero. Right? That's an algebraic idea. Do you guys remember that, real, by the way, real quick? If I had x minus 1 times x plus 5 equals 0, <coughs> just like each one equal to 0, like this, that's the zero product property, blah, blah, blah. Go. Okay. So we're sort of uh, stepping in the direction of division. That's next. Division doesn't have too much to say except it's really weird to try to do the negative 6 divided by negative 2. It's not impossible to do it physically. But if you told them if I see an odd number of negatives it's still negative. If I see an even number it's positive. That makes that a little bit simpler. Um, now you could do, there's a very simple way to do this though. You see the guys and figure this out. There's a certain way to look at this that it would actually be pretty straightforward. What does that top mean you have sitting on a piece of paper? Or like we were just doing a minute ago. What does the top mean you have sitting there? You have six negatives, right? So go ahead and do that. Six, you guys thought we were done with it, huh? Put six negatives out. Hopefully everybody's got six, right? What does this mean then when I divide it by something. You guys see how many groups? How many groups of negative. negative two can you make? You can do that, can't you? Yeah. How many groups do you make? Three. 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 <laughs> right, not three factorial, I'm sure. Just in case you guys don't know. So that does come out to positive three groups, mm -hmm. right? Yes? Would you want it to represent the groups with different colors? Oh, well, this one, the, the, the idea with the answer is it's not a number of chips, it's a number of groups. Okay. So we actually have three groups we can see. Yeah. The weird one would be, how would you represent, now this is easy, this is easy. If you have six reds, uh, how, and you can put them into groups of two, how many groups do you make? Right. But that would be, um, that's a little bit weirder. If you made them two, uh, into two groups, how many would each group have? There you go. They would each have three reds, so negative three. Right? The weird one would, uh, weird, I want to make sure you guys understand. So if I have six negatives, and I put them into two groups, how many are in each group? Negative. Three negatives, so negative three. Right? And we know negative six divided by two is negative three. Are you guys with me? Okay. This is the one. That would be a bit more of a challenge, right? You have six positives. What the shit does that mean, right? Okay. So one way you could look at this, let's see. So let's bring this back to an idea we had before. Um, can somebody explain to me why is eight divided by two four? Again? Because two groups of four make eight. Yeah, so two groups of four, and the quick way to say groups of four is times, right? Because two times four is eight. So if I have any division problem, so if I have uh, negative six divided by two equals something, that means that two times something equals negative six. Mm -hmm. This is the idea of the missing factor approach, mm -hmm. right? You can take a division and make it into an unknown multiplication. So what do I multiply two by to get negative six? What does it take two negative of three. to make negative six? It takes negative three. two negative threes. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, like it. So you got that missing factor approach. That's not even solved time anyway. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So 
とかは。はい。Um, I think I earlier this semester we did talk about negative powers. You guys remember? <laughs> you guys remember what that is next to the negative one? Whenever X. Yeah, let's investigate it. What is X to the seventh divided by X squared? X to the fifth, because you subtract, right? right. Okay. So what's x squared divided by x squared? X to the zero. zero. And what is something divided by itself? One. So that's proof that x to the zero is one. So if I do x to the first divided by x to the second, what do I get when I subtract? Negative, Negative one. What do I get when I kill an x? Right? Doesn't an x cancel? Yeah. How many x's are left? One. Bless you. Where? On the bottom. So a negative power, all it means, all it means is flip. That's all it means. Just whatever I'm sitting on, just flip it. Right? So what would, um, what would 1 over m to the negative 1 be? Okay. M. Yeah. What does it want me to do with the M? It wants me to flip it. Okay. So I'll flip it and there it goes. Wherever the thing is, it wants to go to the other side. What about this? What about by force to the negative one? Yeah, four fifths. Yeah, just flip it. Look, doesn't the five want to go down? Doesn't the four want to go up? Wherever they are, they want to go to the other place. So you can just take a whole fraction, just flip it. All right. That's why the negative one power is normally it's sometimes referred to as the inverse. In this case, the multiplicative inverse, the reciprocal. Yeah. Okay. How are you guys doing? You guys holding up all right? Today? Today's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I'm not going to throw too much more at you. Just one more thing, I think. Um, and this is one that people really have trouble with. Um, how do you tell uh, what's bigger? So, for example, negative 2 and 5. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> negative 2 and 3. <laughs> Which one's bigger? Yeah, right? What about negative 3 and negative 2? Which one's bigger? Negative 2. And you can understand why somebody might think negative 3 is bigger, right? You can could, you could kind of see that, because they're used to 3 being bigger than 2. Right. So of course, what's the thing I can capture visually about how to order integers? Whichever one is more to the not mostly close clear. to zero because it could come from either side and it kind of turns the whole thing around. Whichever one is more to the right, right is bigger than the one that's more to the left. left. Yeah. I like it. That's kind of an informal way of saying it. But you know me and you know Matt. We have to have a formal way to say this. So here's the formal way to identify <laughs> what's going on. Wait. <coughs> A is less than B. If and only if there is a p greater than zero. Oh, you love it already. So that a plus p equals b. So you guys agree. All I'm saying is, if you're saying the number is less than something else, then you have to add something to that one number to make it as big as the other. That's all we're saying. So like here, why is negative two less than three? Because what does negative, what does it take to add to negative two to make it three? What do I add to negative two to make it three? Not negative five. Positive five. Positive five. Yeah. So as long as there's a positive number that I have to add it to what I think the smaller dude is to make it the bigger dude, then that's true. Which, you know, if you think about it for a minute, it's like, all right, yes, it's true. Okay, so 
that might show up in some of the homework, some more conceptual homeworks. All right, so let me show you this video and that's, that's the last thing I'll talk about. Let me show you this cool little video. Let's see if I can find it.